So by this point, you're more or less an expert in PyQt5 and can probably build any application that you like. Um, just to give a demonstration of what you're able to do with the things that you've learned so far, we're going to build a demo application, Mozzarella Ash Badger. Any similarity to web browsers, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Mozzarella Ash Badger promises a revolution in web browsing. You can go back and forward, you can print, there's tapped browsing, you can save files, and you can get help. So let's start making it. We start just as we did with our previous application, importing the PyQt5 classes. Here you'll notice we're also importing the Qt WebKit widgets, which are widgets specifically for providing a web browser interface. They provide the actual browser window. So we create our main window subclass. init super init we create the window same as before we'll set the window title to mozzarella ash badger And let's run that. There we go. So we've got a window, the window's working. So let's turn that into a web browser. We're creating a widget called browser. And to do that, we use Q web view. Create it. Set the URL using Q URL to Google. and then set the central widget. And there we go. We have a web browser. It's literally that easy. If you want some more information about the uh, Qt WebView class, you can look at the documentation on the qt.io website. Make sure you're looking at the uh, version 5 documentation because there are a few small changes. So now I'm going to set an application icon on the window. Now the icon files are available in the resources for this lesson. I've moved them into a folder called icons. You can set the path however you want depending on where the icon is. I'm using ospath join to create the uh, path here, so I've imported that into the namespace. There we go. Now you'll notice it hasn't worked. That's because of a little quirk in Qt that means the window must be visible before you can set the icon on it. So because we don't call show until we're out of the init function, we can't set the icon in the init function. Now the way around this is to move the show that makes the window visible into the init function and then we can set the icon after it's called. And there we go. We have an icon. This ordering of things in um, Qt can sometimes bite you in other places as well. It's kind of annoying. You, you'll get the hang of it. Here I'm just moving the show as far down as possible just to make it um, keep things nice and neat. So now I'm setting some uh, attributes on the app. 
which are the uh, application name, the organization name, which is just the company that produced the application, and also a domain. Now this isn't the web domain, this is the domain that's used for storing settings. It doesn't really matter what you put in here as long as you're consistent. So that's it, we have a working web browser. We've got a window title, we've got a window icon, and a browser. A good start.